So who are the biggest names in the newly released Jeffrey Epstein documents? We're going to get you caught up to speed on what you need to know about some of these very high-profile people. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. So it's been a few days since the release of a trove of documents in the Jeffrey Epstein saga. And by the way, we expect a lot more documents to be released. We believe 191 out of 250 documents have been released so far. A lot of material. So one of the things that we wanted to do was to go over some of the bigger names, the top names in these documents for you. You don't have to read over 900 pages of materials. We're going to break down what you need to know about some of these bigger, high-profile names. But I want to give you a little bit more context about what we're talking about. So this is all coming from when a New York judge named Loretta Preska, now she ordered the release of all of these documents since they're part of court filings in a defamation case, a civil case that was filed by alleged Jeffrey Epstein victim Virginia Jufre against Epstein accomplice Ghislaine Maxwell back in the day. Now, Epstein, of course, was the financier who died in his jail cell uh, awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. He died from a suicide. But this also comes after he pled guilty 10 years earlier to state charges of soliciting and procuring a minor for prostitution. This was a very controversial deal because it saw Jeffrey Epstein avoid prosecution on even more severe federal charges. He was sentenced to 18 months in jail, but spent most of that time in a work release program where he'd be at his office outside of the jail during the day and only have to go back to his jail cell at night. As for Ghislaine Maxwell, she was arrested, charged, and she was convicted of sex trafficking counts in 2021, sentenced to 20 years behind bars. Now, Virginia Jufre, she used to be known as Virginia Roberts before she got married. She filed the defamation lawsuit against Maxwell in 2015, and this case was settled. But media outlets wanted to see all of these court filings, particularly the Miami Herald. And the reason Judge Preska ordered these documents to be unsealed and the identities of numerous John and Jane Doe's to be revealed is because much of this is already known. Much of this has already been disclosed to the public through court filings, interviews, photographs. But we are getting a little bit more context. There seems to be a little bit more of a spotlight put on these connections, put on these associations some of it being tied together in a different way. We're learning some interesting details. But before I get into this, when I talk about the top names, I mean the names in here that are of actual significance to the Epstein-Maxwell saga. That's not to downplay the rest of the filings, but to be clear, it's not just about famous people. Because you have names in these documents like Michael Jackson, Bruce Willis, Cameron Diaz, Leonardo DiCaprio, but they are only mentioned in quick references. Like an alleged victim of Epstein said that Epstein would often name drop these kind of people, saying he had just been on the phone with that celebrity or this celebrity. I say this because I want to be very clear, and I know I say this all the time, but not everyone named in these documents is accused or guilty of some nefarious or criminal activity, okay? These could be former employees, victims, associates, or even just people mentioned in passing during deposition testimony. This is not the Epstein list of everyone who participated in his alleged sex trafficking ring on Epstein's Island, okay? I want to make that clear. By the way, who I'm talking about are the big names that have been mentioned in the documents and have more than a fleeting association or connection to Epstein and provide an interesting tidbit in a way. Okay, now with that, let's start with former President Bill Clinton, okay? He hasn't been accused of any wrongdoing. But his name appears multiple times in these filings. So Clinton has always maintained that while he was associated with Epstein in the 1990s and early 2000s and flew on Epstein's jet for philanthropic work for the Clinton Foundation, he cut ties with him. Clinton's representatives say the former president never visited Little St. James Island, Epstein's Island. Clinton's team said that he didn't know about Epstein's, quote, terrible crimes. And more recently, a Clinton spokesperson told CNN that it has, quote, been nearly 20 years since President Clinton last had contact with Epstein. But as I said, he's mentioned in these documents. So one of the alleged victims of Epstein, Johanna Schoberg, explained in a deposition that she knew Clinton had dealings with Epstein. And according to her, Epstein said at one point, quote, Clinton liked them young, referring to young girls. But it is important to note that Schoberg never met the former president, 
Never saw him in Epstein's little St. James Island. Again, this is something that uh, Epstein had allegedly told her, so take that with a grain of salt. There was something new in the documents that I know for me, I had never heard before, thought it was really interesting. So Virginia Giuffre claimed that former President Bill Clinton stormed into the offices of Vanity Fair and said that the magazine couldn't publish a story about Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, the claim was made in a May 2011 email concerning an interview to promote a book that she was writing. She said Clinton, quote, walked into VF, Vanity Fair, and threatened them not to write sex trafficking articles about his good friend, J.E., meaning Jeffrey Epstein. Well, former Vanity Fair editor-in-chief Graydon Carter absolutely denied this, telling the Telegraph publication, quote, this categorically did not happen. In fact, former Vanity Fair writer Vicki Ward went on CNN and tried to set the record straight, saying that it was Epstein, not Clinton, who tried to block a Vanity Fair story. I never heard that that happened. What I wonder is if Virginia Roberts is hearing um, gossip and getting it, um, getting it slightly wrong, because what did happen um, back in 2002, when I was profiled to uh, write about Jeffrey Epstein, I did hear about the story of two sisters, uh, Maria and Annie Farmer, um, and they were on the record ex detailing to me at the time the abuse they had suffered at the hands of Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. When Jeffrey Epstein realised that I was in possession of, of their allegations, he appeared in the offices of Vanity Fair I knew about this because the fact checker who was fact checking my piece at the time sent me an email saying, oh my God, he's standing here in the office. And, you know, I've, I've said before, you know, the, the farmer sister's allegations were suddenly cut from the piece that was ultimately published. Now, aside from all of that, there were other mentions of former President Bill Clinton in these documents as well, and they really came up in reference to whether Jufre's lawyers would be allowed to depose him in the defamation lawsuit. The documents say that Bill Clinton would be a, quote, key person who can provide information about his close relationship with defendant and Mr. Epstein and disapprove Ms. Maxwell's claims. The judge ultimately denied that request. But there was another reference to Bill Clinton, too. And talking about litigation, Maxwell wasn't too happy about this lawsuit because back in January 10th, 2015, when she emailed her press agent after he had called Jufre a liar, she wrote, quote, I have already suffered such a terrible and painful loss over the last few days that I can't even see what life after press hill even looks like. Statements that don't address all just lead to more questions. What is my relationship to Clinton? Andrew, on and on. Let's rest till Monday. I need headspace. Andrew, of course, referencing Prince Andrew. Now, adding on to that, there's something else I want to mention as we talk about all of these documents. So when Jufre first went public with her claims against Maxwell and Epstein that she was forced into this sex crimes ring and Maxwell was weighing her options on how to respond to all this, Jeffrey Epstein emailed her, emailed Ghislaine Maxwell saying, quote, ask press to investigate whether Clinton was ever there Challenge the press. A little interesting tidbit. Now, one of the things in these filings I want to talk about as well in this document dump was a Maxwell court filing where she disclosed the identities of people that may have information to help her legal case. One of those people was Louis Free, the former head of the FBI from 1993 to June 2001. This was during President Clinton's uh, presidential term. And it says, Mr. Free, quote, may have knowledge concerning travel of Bill Clinton. Probably Maxwell wanted to show that Clinton never visited Epstein's Island, that he was only on Epstein's plane with Secret Service. In another filing, Laura Menninger, Maxwell's attorney, stated in a declaration that Clinton wasn't on the island based on a report from Louis Free. And Menninger emphasized how if he was on the island, the Secret Service would have had all this information, including flight logs showing that he did. So Menninger called the move to question Clinton in, this, in a deposition, quote, utter nonsense and a, quote, transparent ploy to increase media exposure for her sensational stories through deposition sideshow. I want to take a minute to talk about something that happens all the time. 
workplace injuries. If you get hurt at your job, slip and fall, mechanical failures, negligence of your coworkers, something hits you, you're going to need a trusted law firm in your corner. Well, enter Pond Lee Hockey Giordano, a firm that is a heavyweight in the industry and that wins all different kinds of injury cases from workplace but to accidents, to social security disability injuries. They have a track record of recovering over a billion dollars for their clients. They have won over 100,000 cases. They have 250 years of combined experience. How about that? You can check out Pond Lee Hockey Giordano at pondleehockey.com slash LC sidebar or by picking up the phone and calling them at 833-669-4043. Now let's move on to somebody else, a very high profile. We have prominent lawyer and retired Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz to talk about. So Dershowitz has been mentioned before in connection with Jufre and Epstein. Dershowitz also helped negotiate that non-prosecution agreement that I mentioned back in 2008 for Epstein. But then you fast forward to 2022 and Ms. Jufre withdrew an allegation that she had made against Dershowitz. She issued a statement saying, quote, I long believed that I was trafficked by Jeffrey Epstein to Alan Dershowitz. However, I was very young at the time. It was a very stressful and traumatic environment. And Mr. Dershowitz has from the beginning consistently denied these allegations. I now recognize I may have made a mistake in identifying Mr. Dershowitz. But back to these documents at hand, it doesn't end there. Because a person only identified as Jane Doe number 3, who was a minor, says that she was forced to have sex with Dershowitz in Florida, New York, New Mexico, U.S. Virgin Islands, and on private planes. Documents also claim that Dershowitz was an eyewitness to other sexual abuse as well. There was the testimony of two housekeepers of Epstein. They testified that Dershowitz came pretty often to Epstein's Florida mansion and got massages while he was there. And one of these employees said that Dershowitz was present alone at the home of Epstein without his family in the presence of young girls. But I should mention that in another document, Ms. Schoberg, again, Jeffrey Epstein's accuser, denied having sex with Alan Dershowitz in a limousine with Jufre and Epstein in the car. According to the documents, too, Epstein and his alleged co-conspirators previously pled the fifth before answering questions about Alan Dershowitz. Now, Dershowitz's name in these documents is not a real shocker. I mentioned the prior Jufre allegations, but also Flight logs that had been disclosed publicly listed Dershowitz flew on Epstein's plane. And Dershowitz himself admitted that he once received a massage at Epstein's home, but claimed he kept his pants on and that it was carried out by a middle-aged woman named Olga. And Dershowitz admitted that he was on the island. He said, quote, once my wife, my daughter, and I were on vacation in the Caribbean, and he had just bought the island, meaning Epstein, he asked us to come and say hello, no young people on the island, no Lolita Express or anything. That's the nickname for Epstein's plane, by the way. But to be clear, Dershowitz has always denied all accusations of wrongdoing. He actually was pushing for the release of all these documents for purposes of transparency and to clear his name. And this past week, he released a defense online. Of course I'm on the list. Um, I was his lawyer. I flew on his uh, plane with other lawyers um, several times for legal meetings in, in Florida and, and other proceedings. Um, I was his lawyer. Uh, not only did I fly on his plane as his lawyer, I flew uh, with Senator John Glenn uh, uh, to meet um, President Shimon Peres of Israel. Um, I took my nephew um, on a flight to uh, Cape Canaveral to see a satellite a launch um, I was invited by the head of NASA uh, through his close friend, Jeffrey Epstein, to see the launch like so many others. I had an innocent relationship with a man who I didn't know, nobody suspected, uh, had done anything wrong. Indeed, uh, when my, uh, my granddaughter had a soccer tournament, he lent us his house in Florida. He wasn't there, um, but my whole family, my grandchildren, my daughter stayed there. There were no pictures on the wall or anything that would lead anyone to suspect that anything untoward was going on. There's no way I would ever allow my grandchildren, my children to be in a house uh, that eventually uh, turned out to have been the location for uh, so many, so many uh, questionable and and illegal activities. That was a 31 minute response, by the way, we just took a snippet of it. 
All right, moving on to another big name that you know has already been swept up in the Epstein scandal, Prince Andrew, Duke of York. So Virginia Giuffre has accused him of being one of the people that she had sex with as a minor. Now, he settled a lawsuit with her out of court for reportedly millions of dollars, but he continues to deny any wrongdoing. In fact, his attorney said in a court filing, quote, Prince Andrew regrets his association with Epstein and commends the bravery of Miss Giuffre and other survivors in standing up for themselves and others. Now, talking about these documents, I mentioned that email from Maxwell before where she references Prince Andrew, but there is more in these new documents. So, Miss Schoberg says that Prince Andrew groped her breast while they were taking a photo in Epstein's Manhattan apartment in 2001, and this involved, of all things, a puppet. Yes. So, Miss Schoberg explained, quote, at one point, Elaine told me to come upstairs, and we went into a closet and pulled out the puppet, the caricature of Prince Andrew, and brought it down. And there was a little tag on the puppet that said Prince Andrew on it, and that's when I knew who he was. It looked like him, and she brought it down and presented it to him, and that was a great joke because apparently it was a production from a show on BBC, and they decided to take a picture with it in which Virginia and Andrew sat on a couch, they put the puppet on Virginia's lap, and I sat on Andrew's lap, and they put the puppet's hand on Virginia's breast, and Andrew put his hand on my breast, and they took a photo. Pretty wild stuff right there to think about. But in another document, there is an unidentified accuser, Jane Doe number 3, who I mentioned before. She claims that she was told, instructed to sleep with Prince Andrew during an orgy on Epstein's island. In fact, she was told to give him anything that he demanded. This court filing from 2014 alleges that she was forced to have sex with the prince when she was just a minor, by the way, in at least three places. Not only Little St. James Island, Epstein's Island, but also in Maxwell's apartment in London and in New York. Now, this Jane Doe 3 was then instructed to report back to Jeffrey Epstein about what happened. Talking of Prince Andrew, though, let's also highlight the transcript of the deposition of T1 Alessi. This is a manager of Epstein's Florida house. This was in the release documents, by the way, and he explained, quote, any celebrities, including Prince Andrew and Andrew's ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson, were at Epstein's home. In fact, he said the prince spent weeks with us, sleeping in the main guest bedroom and getting daily massages. Ferguson, by the way, has not been accused of any wrongdoing. All right, let's talk about Jean-Luc Brunel. He's the French modeling agent who killed himself in a parish jail in 2022 awaiting trial on rape charges. He's been cited as a close friend of Jeffrey Epstein. Now, he was accused of providing Epstein's sex trafficking ring with young girls as young as 12 and also sexually abusing minors as well. Brunel denied the accusations. But going back to the filings, in her deposition, Giuffre claimed that she was ordered by Maxwell to have sex with Brunel at many places. In one of the documents, it says that Epstein forced Jane Doe 3 to be trafficked by Brunel. It goes on to say Epstein forced Jane Doe 3 to observe him, Brunel, and Maxwell engage in illegal sexual acts with dozens of underage girls. Epstein also forced Jane Doe 3 to have sex with Brunel on numerous occasions at places including Epstein's mansion in West Palm Beach, Little St. James Island in the U.S. Virgin Islands, New York City, New Mexico, Paris, the south of France, and California. Now, the documents also allege that Mr. Brunel would offer girls from poor countries modeling jobs as a way to lure them into all this. In fact, in another document, accuser Nadia Marcinkova is asked in a deposition about 12-year-olds being sent to Jeffrey Epstein to be sexually abused, and if, quote, these three 12-year-olds were from France, were they sent to him on his birthday by Jean-Luc Brunel or by somebody else? Marcinkova ended up invoking the Fifth Amendment to that question. Also, I should tell you that a new lawsuit has been filed out in Los Angeles in the last few days, accusing Brunel of holding a woman hostage at a Canadian estate. The accuser, who's using the pseudonym Jessica Kramer, says that she was working as a model in New York when she was 18 years old, and she says Brunel and some of his employees drove her across the border into Canada, held her captive at a home there for several days. The plaintiff also claims that Brunel assaulted her at various locations, including Los Angeles, she says Brunel sought out models and young girls promising modeling jobs, but instead drugged and sexually assaulted them. This is a name you might have heard of connected to Jeffrey Epstein, but was also mentioned in these documents. Les Wexner, 
Now, the name might not be easily recognizable to a lot of you out there, but you certainly know his company. So this is a billionaire who owns Bath & Body Works, Abercrombie & Fitch, and possibly, most notably, Victoria's Secret. Wexner hired Jeffrey Epstein to be his personal financial manager in the 1980s, had a close relationship with him. In fact, in 1991, Wexner granted Epstein power of attorney over his affairs, and he also made Epstein a trustee for the board of the Wexner Foundation. There were accusations in the 90s that Epstein was using his connection to Wexner to pose as a Victoria's Secret recruiter. But in 2006, after Epstein was charged with multiple counts of molestation and unlawful sexual activity with a minor that ended in that 2008 plea deal I mentioned, the New York Times reported that Wexner didn't break ties with Epstein until 18 months later and that the Oregon Attorney General was investigating whether Victoria's Secret had helped Epstein's legal team back in 2006, even digging up information on one of Epstein's accusers. But then in 2019, after Epstein was locked up for the second time, Wexner wrote a letter to the Wexner Foundation saying his former financial advisor had actually misappropriated huge sums of money from his family. Wexner said in an email to employees in 2019 that he regretted he ever crossed paths with Epstein. Quote, when Mr. Epstein was my personal money manager, he was involved in many aspects of my financial life. But let me assure you that I was never aware of the illegal activity charged in the indictment. Now on to the documents. So his name, Les Wexner, comes up in one deposition of Maxwell, where she's asked whether she provided a woman with an outfit of a sexual nature to wear for Mr. Wexner. Maxwell responded, categorically, no, you did get that. I said, categorically, no. Interestingly, the document dump also revealed dozens of pages of handwritten phone messages from Jeffrey Epstein's staff, and it showed that there were many calls from Wexner or his office. There was also a note saying that Wexner's wife, Abigail, had called and wanted to talk about, quote, something private. Interesting to think about. All right, moving on to magician David Copperfield. Did you know about him in these document dumps? Yeah, he is a very high-profile name mentioned in these filings. So Copperfield was actually previously subpoenaed in a litigation connected to Epstein, never was deposed. There was an allegation that Copperfield had visited Epstein in the past, had an association with him. But back to Epstein accuser Johanna Schoberg, who I've mentioned a lot so far, she testified that she met David Copperfield at a dinner at one of Epstein's homes. And she says Copperfield performed some magic tricks. Before asking if she, Schoberg, was aware that, quote, girls were getting paid to find other girls. Hmm. She says he didn't really go into any further detail, including whether the girls were underage. Strange comment, right? But what is interesting about that, and maybe more importantly, and I've said this before, is that Epstein and Maxwell were accused of doing that. They were accused of using their victims as recruiters to find more girls to abuse. That's a really interesting comment to make or allegedly make, right? So we don't know if it was actually made. But Schoberg testified that there was a girl at that house during that dinner that, quote, seemed young, could have been in high school. Now, Copperfield is also referenced in the deposition of one of Epstein's former employees, Sarah Kellen. She's asked about Epstein's relationship with Copperfield and whether he was part of the sex trafficking ring. Namely, would Copperfield provide Epstein tickets to his magic shows, his illusionist shows? To be given out to young women, the idea there would be that you maybe take them backstage, you know, you invite them backstage, you get the rest. Well, Kellen asserted her Fifth Amendment right not to self-incriminate herself, and she didn't answer the question. All right, now let's talk about late New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, because he's also listed in the documents. So Virginia Dufre named Richardson as one of the people that she gave a massage to, but said she couldn't remember when Ghislaine Maxwell instructed her to do this. She did recall that she was sent to New Mexico, though. Now, Ms. Schoberg explained in a deposition that she believed Maxwell went to dinner with Richardson when Schoberg was visiting a ranch in New Mexico. Richardson died in September of last year, but he denied all of the claims. He was also listed on that filing that I mentioned from Ghislaine Maxwell as someone who may have information concerning Virginia Jufre's quote, false claims. In other words, Maxwell had hoped that he would be someone to help her legal case against Jufre. Now, a name you likely don't know, Glenn Dubin, very important character in this. So he is a billionaire hedge fund manager here in the United States. He had a relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. In fact, it's been reported that Epstein invested in his firm. But Dubin's wife, Dr. Eva Anderson Dubin, 
actually dated Jeffrey Epstein in the 80s and 90s before marrying Dubin. But here's where things take kind of a controversial turn. So after Epstein pled guilty in 2008 to soliciting and procuring prostitution of a minor, this couple allegedly came to his aid. They invited him for Thanksgiving dinner. Anderson Dubin even told Epstein's probation officer that she was, quote, 100% comfortable with Jeffrey Epstein around my children. Now, according to Jufre in these documents, Glenn Dubin was the first person she was forced to have sex with after she completed her training as a masseuse and started working with Epstein. In a deposition, Jufre testified, quote, when they say massage, that means erotic, okay? That's their term for it. And I'm telling you that Ghislaine told me to go to Glenn Dubin and give him a massage, which means sex. In another document, a deposition from 2016, one of Dubin's former employees, a Ronaldo Rizzo, claimed that Epstein and Maxwell visited the Dubins once in 2005, and they brought along a 15-year-old Swedish girl who is, quote, shaking uncontrollably. According to Rizzo, the girl said that she was pressured to have sex, but before he could get more information, Miss Anderson Dubin walked into the room. Now, the Dubins have previously denied all allegations of wrongdoing or knowledge of Epstein's activity. Now, those were some of the biggest names that have actual real connections to Epstein and Maxwell. I'm going to give you, though, a couple of honorable mentions in case you didn't hear about it. So former President Donald Trump is mentioned in these documents. And we knew that Trump had had a previous relationship with Epstein, but the two apparently had a falling out. He is mentioned briefly, as I said. So when Ms. Schoberg says that she was on Epstein's jet, at one point, they were diverted to New Jersey because of bad weather, and she claims Epstein said, quote, great, we'll call up Trump and we'll go to the casino. Now, Schoberg also testified in the documents that she was never asked to give Donald Trump a massage. Interestingly, though, Jufre had testified that when she was 17, she worked as a spa attendant at Trump's Mar-a-Lago in Florida, but was then lured away to become a masseuse for Jeffrey Epstein. Also, honorable mention, Stephen Hawking acclaimed physicist. A little bit of a weird one here. So an email from Jeffrey Epstein to Ghislaine Maxwell in 2015, after Jufre had filed the lawsuit, said Maxwell could, quote, issue a reward to any of Jufre's associates who come forward and prove her allegations are false, including that Hawking partook in an underage orgy. Again, no idea what that means, but apparently this was an allegation. I don't know. By the way, Stephen Hawking died in 2018. All right, so we will obviously continue to follow this as more documents are unsealed and more details regarding big names are potentially revealed. Thanks so much for joining us here on Sidebar, everybody. We always very much appreciate it. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time. Thank you.